I was over at the new studio oh, looking yeah. at it. <gasps> Amazing. Mm-hmm. No, I know. Pretty sweet. Do you see the basement? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to load that up with like nice. electron microscopes or something. That'd be awesome. Nice. <laughs> so what do you got? Oh, I... Uh, uh, they threatened to just throw me on the camera for like 45 minutes so I grabbed a bunch of crap that was in the back of my candy van and like I have the Android hardware uh, development platform wherever the camera is that's cool. awesome oh right yeah there. it's an Arduino and some joysticks oh and right stuff that's on the one it. they were showing off at uh, Google I.O. right yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah yes they sent me one I can't explain much about it because I just just got it okay and then later um, on Ham Nation, I'll be showing off a uh, software-defined radio that I built from scratch with FPGAs and analog circuitry and stuff. Um, Sweet. And then I, so you're going to be on Ham Nation then? Yeah. This, this evening? Sweet. Yeah, like an hour away. Is that away? right next? Or? Uh, yeah, it's at, at, at six. six. Right. Yeah. Hey, speaking of which, I actually have to run and go uh, do show prep for NSFW. So I'd hate to I hate to run, Jerry. It would, I feel bad. Oh. But uh, but we're gonna be back at uh, you know for NSFW after Ham Nation. So I'll see you guys later. All right. Okay, doggie. Bye, Brian. Bye. Have a nice break. <laughs> Bye, Brian's hand. And I also acquired this. It's a thermal. Ugh. Imager, which someone put their thumb through the protective. Oh. Yeah, it's too bad I don't have some uh, uh, liquid nitrogen. We could be like, you know, thermal imaging our uh, whatevers. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you can thermal image uh, farts. So. Oh really? Yeah, so that's a must hmm. try, right? Yes, of course. Of course. That's the first thing I thought of actually when I saw that enter the room. Really? I don't know what that says about me, <laughs> but. Nerd. Nerd. <laughs> so this one actually works with a fluttering mirror. Yeah. So it flutters back and forth, and it has a, presumably a, a linear array of thermal sensors. So as the mirror moves back and forth, it scans, it does a slow scan of... Uh, now, Jerry, it says property of IBM. Where did you get this? Mm, it does. Well, I got kind of out of the back of a van. <laughs> Fell off a truck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, they're probably not missing it. Nah. Be honest. Now this thing is so antique. Now they have these that are full motion video, and they're handheld. Fluke makes makes one, and they have uh-huh. all the cooling built right into the. Oh man. The the handset. Well, you can replace that part that somebody put the thumb. Yeah, I don't think it's all that important. Yeah. Um, you can't use glass in the front because glass absorbs it's too much feels, IR. That feels just like saran wrap or something. I mean, yeah. it's really flimsy. I don't know if this is a single pixel or or a linear array. So they could do potentially two different ways. Oh, wait. Now that I look in here, I think it's a single pixel. So uh-huh. they just have a single pixel and they slow scan it with mirrors. Because looking down in here, I see that there's a rotary. Maybe I can show this. It's, uh, that way. Oh, yeah. That one. Uh, uh. This, this thing camera. weighs about 25 pounds. Yeah, it's not light. There we go. All right, so as I look down in here, I see that there's a mirror that's directing the, the, the black body radiation as it goes through here, which everything gives off if it has any heat. It's emitting black body radiation, which is just a really long wavelength of light. And there's uh, an axis around rotary this way and this way. So by spinning these, this mirror and then angling it down, it can scan an entire raster image. So, How many megapixels? Point zero zero. Well, the, the main <laughs> box that goes to this thing has a composite output, so I presume it's no more than 512 pixels by... Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Or is it 512 lines by 720 pixels or something? It's not a, a lot of resolution for sure. And chances are, as old as this thing is, it's probably probably very low resolution. Have you have you hooked it up? Have you used it? No, I just got it you yesterday. You just got it yesterday. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So sweet. It's pretty exciting. Very nice. So. Well, cool. So, what are you up? To, uh, we're down. I guess. Yeah, I'm from Portland, uh, so I'm down. What are you down here for? I'm going to be talking to Intersil about doing a video series with them. They're a chip company. Oh, okay. So they like all my inventing. So it's pretty much build things with Intersil microchips and then do fun little videos with it. Oh, perfect. So chances are I'll be down here very often, like multiple times a month, because they want me to work on sites so they can 
kind of show, you know, what Inner Sill is all about. Uh huh. Show how Be cool in their they labs are. and all that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, so great. Well, you have to swing through. Yeah. Well, I was talking to Leo about maybe doing something semi-regular. Oh, yeah. I know he's dying for you to do something for us. Yeah. Oh, and I'm leaving a pinball machine, too. Oh, so. good. <laughs> yeah. Which one? It's called Road Kings. It's it's not an A-list game. It's not a D. It's like kind of a, a C-level or B-level game. But Road Kings? Road Kings, yeah. If you look it up online, there's an internet pinball database that'll show it. Like do, it's, do you get involved with California Extreme? I was just there Were this you there? weekend. Okay, yeah. How it was, was it? Great. It was great. Cool. So California it's ex- Extreme is a show that happens um, once a year, and there's about 200 pinball machines and 200 arcade machines and a lot of speakers. This year they had a lot of 8-bit composers there. So really, they had all these guys and gals playing. Uh, Game Boys and like playing music on them. It was a trip. <laughs> That's sweet. There was a there was one band I can't remember who they were, but they were they had like what's the there's a lot of people making these like helmets and stuff that cover your face up and have LEDs and stuff in them. Daft Punk. Yeah, Daft Punk helmets. So they were kind of like dressed and stuff like that, and uh, they had this huge like smoke machine, and it like filled the whole room and they That's, were rocking out. Uh, I wish I could have made it down there. There it is. That's. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what this sounds like? This sounds like the new Twit Studio right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> or at least this sounds, like, this sounds like what it will sound like. Jerry, <laughs> keep it down down there. Ooh, some good music. So this, the theme of this pinball is like, this came out about the time Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Uh-huh. So it's got all these like really hardcore looking uh, laser wielding uh, uh, motorcyclists post apocalyptic I love the music the music's great yeah that <laughs> and it, it has is m- so like Commodore 64 demo oh. style music yeah I think <laughs> I it's probably it. about 1985 so yeah, yeah they oh, were yeah. synthesizing everything with <laughs> and uh, so it has multi ball you can lock um, a ball to the left and to the right then you go into multi ball mode and it's like catchphrases, I'll be back, Jack. <laughs> but, oh, awesome. Can't wait to play that. So you just threw that in the car? And <laughs> yeah. This, you know, no big deal. I have a small pinball route in Portland where I put pinballs on location. And, okay. And this one doesn't do very good. So you guys get the kind that's, of drags. That's, no, that's right. We don't want to take a high-performing <laughs> yeah. pinball machine away from you. So getting it out of my shop and making space where I can work on like other things is good. Mm-hmm. So if you guys can get some enjoyment out of it for oh, a few definitely. months. definitely. Are you kidding me? Of course oh, we look will. look at that. Yeah, that's Are you good kidding? Thing. We'll definitely enjoy this. Yeah, run it to the ground until it's just dust. A little bit different music. It sounds like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, it's got the sounds it's like of old asteroids. Yeah. And I love that there are just videos on YouTube of a lockdown camera on a pinball machine. (laughs) Yeah. um, We don't get uh, copyright takedown notices. No, totally. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Full tilt. So terribly exciting. I'll have to make the tilt really uh, sensitive. So so it'll train you guys to be good players instead of. Okay. Yeah. There's something about pinball, like if if you can just tilt the machines unlimited and not tilt out, I mean, it's kind of fun for a little while, but then it's no longer fun. So they've got to be kind of random enough. The ball Mm -hmm. needs to be like bouncing around and close to losing it out the sides, and it's got to be close to tilting it Mm -hmm. to keep it fun. Yeah, I I agree. Cool. So this thing, uh, my buddy Ken worked on this over at Google. The Arduino, or the uh, there it is. the hardware platform. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. You got any plans for it? I might put this into a pinball machine since I have this pinball route. Uh huh. I'm thinking about. I've got some other boards here, these Texas Instruments boards. These are little direct conversion wireless radios. Oops. Oh, yeah, other way. <laughs> <No. Yeah>, camera <laughs> Reverse there. camera now. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Back I'm there. really smooth in a hand model here. <laughs> All right. So this is the Texas Instrument Board. So these are fairly inexpensive for the developer boards, you know, like 20 bucks. So I'm thinking about putting one of these in a pinball machine and monitoring switches. So 
you know, is the machine turned on is an important thing as a pinball operator so it can be making money because oftentimes it'll have a fault and someone will just turn it off. So I'll hook up switches, things like coin switches so I can monitor coins and mm-hmm. and ultimately have like every switch in the pinball machine wired to one of these so I can tell if, if a switch hasn't been hit for quite a while, phone home through this board, which allows me to talk to the Android mm-hmm. phone and send me an SMS saying, oh. ah, there's a problem. You uh-huh. should probably check out, you know, drop target number three. That's brilliant. On bad cats or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. My friend Ken was telling me a bit about this. Hopefully I won't get him in trouble. Apparently this board was very expensive to manufacture. Why is that? The Google logo alone is <laughs> is like... Uh, that yeah. seems a little vain, like <laughs> wasting that much money. So, man. I guess they have a lot of cash. <laughs> they probably didn't even worry about it. I don't think these kits are particularly cheap, but uh, it's got the but Google the, logo, which was multiple and colors. And so Yeah, this is uh, gold-plated. Yeah. Uh, this is a cap sense button, so... You touch it and it'll uh, trigger something. Oh, okay. Just looking at it, looks like it's just one button, though. It doesn't look like the, the eyes or the arms do anything. It has a photo cell, a temperature sensor here, two one-amp one relays right through here that let you switch high-voltage, high-current devices, I should say. Let's see whether what they're really... Rel- 120 volts up to one amp. So that's pretty useful. And then... These are RC car servo connections. Mm-hmm. Looks like there's three of them here, so you can drive mm-hmm. little servos. And then this. You could turn your pinball machines into remote control vehicles. Oh, perhaps. <laughs> Just drive it around the bar or something yeah, like that. When, when, when you need to repair it, have it drive With, to you. Yeah. And then you can repair <laughs> or you it. You don't have to back. go out on the route. Just yeah. let them drive themselves. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and you'd need tank tracks around Portland. They don't yeah. need to fix pot, potholes. <laughs> I thought this sweet. was interesting. Though. The only thing I've researched on it uh, so far is this, this joystick. And it uses magnets and Hall effect sensors inside, or a single chip Hall effect sensor. So by moving this little paddle around, the Hall effect sensors detect the motion in it like an analog joystick. But the interface, since it's all on the same chip, it, it converts it to a serial communication to the the Arduino board, which, uh-huh, which if is I can pull it apart underneath. here. So this is this has an Atmel chip, and this is an open source platform that a lot of hobbyists are using, and and people are actually putting into production too. It's called Arduino. This is a this is one of their bigger parts, the Atmega or something part. And uh, Google spun their own version of it here to put some USB on the go interface so you can hook it to your phone and then this is a connection to your PC so you can uh-huh. you can do the software development right. and this little Android guy here has two LEDs for his eyes which is cute I suppose <laughs> it is cute I guess there's a there's some problems with the phones because the manufacturers didn't anticipate having USB on the go devices um, hook up to the phones. They didn't hook up some of the wiring to it. Oh. So currently, when you plug this into the current set of phones, the phone wants to go into charge mode. So it's looking for you know so many milliamps of, at five volts mm-hmm. coming out of the connection, uh-huh. and it requires that. So you know right now you have to hook it up to an AC wall wart to use it. So it kind of ruins a little bit of the portability yeah. aspect, but. But going forward, newer hardware devices will probably have that in That's what in I'm mind. told is yeah. now that now they know hook up all of the wires or whatever. And I've heard I've heard rumors that people have taken their phones apart and, and jumpered them or, or put jumper. the parts on that are needed. Hmm. I I don't know off the top of my head what that entails, but Right. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. Cool. Apparently it only works on a couple phones. The my friend gave the me Nexus like S. a Nexus S and I can't remember the other ones he would said, but Gal- I didn't have the right the one. Galaxy S2 work with it? No. Doesn't sound familiar. Hmm. It was just a handful of phones currently. Because you have to have Honeycomb version something on there, whatever the latest Honeycomb is, uh-huh. to gain access to the, the, to the uh, platform. Yeah. So that would be tablets alone then, or it would be phones? I'd well, that, they gave me this phone and said this is the one. Huh. Uh, so... I don't know. I haven't even 
messed with it yet. Well, you can put yeah. honeycomb on, on. You root it. You can put honeycomb on it. Yeah, well, right? I don't know if I've seen honeycomb on phones yet. Um, well, if you can put it on a nook, you can put it on <laughs> I s- Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> Quick um, chat room. Can you put honeycomb on... Uh, on phones, I, I that's that sticks out in my mind. Yeah. But you know, I'm such a noob when it comes to uh, Android devices. Mm-hmm. You know, honeycomb means nothing to me. Hon- well, honeycomb is is their version of Android for tablets. Um, so, so I mean, that's kind of what you have. You know, coming out on tablets. Oh, I going see what forward. you're saying. You know what? I was getting confused with ice cream sandwich. You're right. It, well, You're ice right cream sandwich it. is the unifier. Honeycomb is meant yeah. for tablets. Uh, ice cream sandwich hasn't come out yet, and it'll be the unifier that kind of connects right, right, tablets right. and okay. phones on the same. All right, thing. I'm probably just talking out I my ass. Wrong. Then I, it, I don't it's know. It's probably yeah. It's probably. I mean, maybe it's some you know later version like two dot three dot four of gingerbread, the latest version, which is the last version on phones essentially, mm-hmm. uh, which is probably what the Nexus S is running. So maybe it's that. Yeah, just plug it in and see if it works. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> it's early days for that, too. So it would be really cool to see what people do with that. Yeah, I'm excited um, to start playing with it. I've had it for a few weeks, and it's been sitting on the shelf. I've been working on this software to find radio and just dying to get in here and play with it. Mm-hmm. It's just an, a sneak peek of what's going to come yeah, up next Yeah, yeah, what's coming up on Ham Nation. Ham Nation. Um, with Bob Heil, who was just up here last I didn't week. even know you guys were doing a ham radio we just started it. Oh. Like it's less, uh, just over mm-hmm. a month. I think we've been doing it. All Let's right. See. There we go. All right. This this pile of wires and circuit boards is a, a new technique within the last couple decades of receiving and transmitting radio, where instead of having local oscillators and mixing with radio frequencies and then down converting radio frequency to an intermediate frequency that's easier to process, this type of receiver does direct conversion from radio frequency directly to a digital interface. And then all of the tricky analog stuff that you normally would be doing in in circuits on your radio are done mathematically in an FPGA or a computer or a DSP. So... What I have here, this is an analog board that's doing the direct conversion, and really there's very few parts on this. It's taking a, a local oscillator from the FPGA, which I can generate almost any, within reason, uh, frequency from this. It gets down converted to almost DC in the audio frequency and above and below. And then uh, it gets sampled by this audio digitizer. It's an analog to digital converter. It gets fed into this FPGA that's on the back side of this board. Which is field programmable gate array, is that right? Yes. So oh, yeah, I, I knew that. Yeah, before. FPGAs. <laughs> yeah, a, a quick summary of those. Those are, those are kind of like emulator chips for hard um, ASICs um, or chips. So instead of having fixed logic in there like AND gates and OR gates, it has memory lookup tables. And so each of these lookup tables have four inputs and one output. And so by programming the lookup table, it can emulate any four-input gate that you can make. So you can have a four-input AND or a four-input OR gate. And then the output of that little RAM array goes to a register, which you can store the result. And then with that, you can form any digital logic you want, with the downside being it's slower than full custom chips with AND gates and OR gates hardwired into them. But, you know, if I want to make an AM receiver in this, for instance, I would download new code to this, which does the DSP functions that does amplitude demodulation. If I want to do frequency demodulation, Uh I would download new code. It would just be new math that it's calculating. So you can do all your tuning and all of your squelch and all of that from from software. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, A lot of really cool processing um, that you can do in this you can i actually have a vga output on this so i'm displaying <laughs> a, uh, a fft display of the entire spectrum that this can see so you see little spikes on the spectrum and you're like oh i think there's a station there and you scroll over with this little cursor that's uh-huh. on the screen and then you listen to it and like you hear da 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 that's so much better yeah. than blindly no kidding turning a knob and listening you can just look at it yeah but- it's really cool um, I have some YouTube videos of it up on um, my Jerry Ellsworth Jabber 
YouTube channel. So if you want to look that up at some point. That's the biggest USB dongle I've ever seen. This one here? <laughs> yeah. It's got a, I can't flip it over, but it's got a lot going on on yeah. there. <laughs> so. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, it looks okay. complicated, but in, in reality, it's very simple. And the output of, of just this board alone, this little the analog board, can go directly into your Mac or your PC, and then your PC is fast enough now. Mm -hmm. Through your audio, your sound card, you can sample a certain amount of the... A bandwidth, uh -huh. so you can look at say 92 kilohertz around your your center frequency that you're sending to it, and you can see all the stations that are mm -hmm. within that range, and you can just tune to it. That's it's, cool. It's That's super cool. People in the chat room are super stoked now. By the way, they're uh, saying this is a pretty cool <laughs> cool treat. Jerry, simple, not equal, normal human. <laughs> <laughs> Other people are saying, she's speaking English, but I can't understand her, <laughs> <laughs> which I kind of fall somewhat in that camp, camp yeah. myself, well, but, but it's very the cool. The ham radio guys will be like, oh, yeah, I think. all over it. Up, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I just made a video for Element 14 that sponsored this project, uh -huh. and uh, if you, you can see a preview of it, it's not officially launched. It's If you do a search for, um, you only live nine times in Element 14. You'll be able to find it on their site, and it goes through. They kind of like little fun intros and outros on, on things, so we did a spy theme, so my cat had to go like into the secret lab where robots were out of control and blow it up. But nice. in the middle, there's eight <laughs> agonizing minutes of how software-defined oh. radio work, and then you get to see Are you kidding me? Those aren't agonizing. That's awesome. 